And I swear for goodness, that chick face do look like a motherfucking shiny ass piggy bank. I swear I wanted to stuff some goddamn coins in her mouth and bust that bitch head open just to get my motherfucking change back. She. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I am Poetry. You are here for a uh, Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 1 Reunion Recap and Review Part 1. Now, let me tell you. They could have made this a two-hour reunion and been done with it on the same doggone night. We really didn't need to have to split into two reunions. The only reason why I think it's split is because of so many people and they have so many storylines to try to cover that they couldn't get it all in this first minute, plus these little fake-ass fights that was potentially breaking out. Yeah, so that's the only reason. Plus, they did like a... Uh, 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 who did a performance? Trick or Trina did a performance in the middle of the show. It was just like another five minutes of it. They left that out. They could have covered like three more storylines. So, we got Nina Parker as the host. A lot of people seem to like her as the host of the show. I think she's kind of boring and don't ask the right questions the majority of the time. That's just my opinion about Nina. But Nina looked really pretty. Um, I did love her whole look. <clears throat> I'm usually not going to... I don't know why I don't go through the fashion. Because I like watching modeling shows and fashion shows. So, um, whose outfit threw me off? Hmm. Let's see. Um, Blue. He had that chinchilla on his back. That threw me off. Uh, Jeffrey wore chinchilla with nothing else. That threw, He's like one of the worst dressing people on this damn show to me. Um, Prince in his fuchsia suit. Satin suit. Him and Veronica matched today. And Hollywood with the comb front her. Those are the things that bother me as far as people's looks on the show. Everybody else I thought looked pretty okay. You know, it was alright. Okay, so... On the stage, starting off, we got Trick and Treat, Gunplay, Joy, Tip, Pleasure, and Bobby. On the couch, we got Prince, Amara La Negra, um, Holly Ass, Pooch, Shay Johnson, and Blue. Um, we missing old fake ass Steph. We missing um, the real one, JoJo. We missing Simply Jess. So I think that's everybody that's part of the that's supposed to be part of the cast that we're missing um i didn't see gunplay's girlfriend kiara i didn't see her initially but during the show during the taping i, I started seeing like kiara in like flash points but i didn't see her in this first half um the, the jamaican chick gabby the pleasure was fucking with they gonna satellite her ass in oh and liz liz was on the couch liz was so she became so irrelevant at a certain point during the show. So, yeah, after I think her and Prince broke off their relationship, Liz became unimportant. So, yeah, she was there. Um, hell, Scrappy had more screen time than Liz, so shit, Scrappy could have been on the show. Matter of fact, they brought Juju on. Juju wasn't part of this case while she's sitting on the stage. Scrappy would have been a better person, but Scrappy had sense enough not to come on her unless he's going to bring his ass on in the second half. So, anyway... Let's go ahead and start it off. We start off with Bobby is always dressed eccentric to me, but that's just Bobby's flair, so it don't bother me with Bobby. Okay, so we started off with Bobby and Trina's story. Um, when Nina says that Trina don't want to pump up, pump life into his career, Trina looked like, and I'm thinking, why is she looking shocked? Where is the lie? There was no lie in that girl. Um, why the hell they bring the minion Alvin on stage? They brought him on stage too. So we get to the tea that Trina is. And Bobby just been a few years ago. That she didn't say how many years. And he from her daddy's side of the family. And she don't like to fuck with him. Or nor his family. So that's pretty much why she been extending the I don't give a fuck attitude to Bobby. But it's much more than that Trina. Let's just be honest girl. You have a real big problem with over the top gay people. As Malik does as well. You and him have the same issue. And even though Malik was trying to say. Well you know I'm gay. so I talk, No you still have a problem with these people. And it's very clear. Alvin is not as flamboyant. But he acts the exact same way as Bobby. The act is what you claim you don't like about Bobby. But your boy, your number one road doggy, the rich one, boy, get the fuck out of here. He act just like Bobby, but you don't trip off of him. You only you only say shit about Bobby. And this is because of his flamboyancy. Let's just be honest, Trina. Stop fucking lying, girl. But anyway, um, Bobby is real good at taking the blame for other people's bullshit. We already saw through the whole damn season. He was taking on the blame for him and Jeffrey breaking up. 
when really he really did nothing to really um break up their relationship um he went to work that's pretty much what the fuck he was doing so he can try to make their paper and get his album put out and jeffrey just needed some more time with him that does not justify him cheating and continue and then lying about it and doing it on more than one occasion and pretending that you finna be in a relationship with this dude or matter of fact not pretending acting moving forward to be in a relationship with this dude while still holding on to bobby and acting like bobby is flipping out and acting, no you deserve to get your ass whooped you did deservingly so but violence is not the answer anyway i like the fact that because Bobby said he's stepping up, he gonna take responsibility for the whole Trina situation. He understand where she coming from, yada yada this. I say fuck Trina and the horse she rode in on and shit, the horse that's sitting on top of your head that her her be fucked the hell up. Trina her be fucked up. You got too much money, baddest bitch, to be looking like a raggedy bitch. What is wrong with your motherfucking her? Oh my god. Anyway, Trick was like you know. I, I respect Bobby for being a real man and saying that shit. You know, basically, Bobby was um not wrong. He wasn't wrong. He was just being the bigger person in the situation. He, like I said, he's taking the blame. And it seems like he does that a lot. He In all his relationships, Bobby is the one that's going to take on that blame. Say, so you know what? I'm going to look at what I did wrong. And I'm just going to say that, you know, it's my fault. I apologize. And the person that he's dealing with is not correcting their motherfucking issues. But I love how the fact that Trick is so supportive of Bobby. I love that. Um, they went on to talk about his music. And Trick was like, you know, he got a real winner there. I saw, when I heard Bobby before, I was like, Bobby got some talent. He can sing and everything, you know. And if you look on VH1's website, they got a lot of exclusive clips with Bobby singing and performing and rapping. So I was like, Bobby got some talent. So Trick is like riding for him. He said, but he understands that in the industry, it's going to be some people that's going to be like, nah, I can't do him because he gay. Yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. But anyway, uh, Trina went on to say that her real issue with Bobby is that he's just annoying as fuck. You know, he always, da, 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 da. And then, yo, man, you Alvin. He's the same way, bitch, please. Anyway, he, um, Bobby say, okay, like Alvin, like him, like that bitch over there. So then him and Alvin get into an exchange of words about, bitch, who got the most money? I'm rich, bitch. You poor bitch. You want to beat me? I got 15000 on my on my wrist and shit. And I'm driving a motherfucking Range Rover. Correct me if I'm wrong. When did the Range Rover become a luxe motherfucking automobile? A Range Rover? That's like the, the typical vehicle that our high school teachers drive. A Range Rover? That's how you justify whether or not you're rich? The the $15,000 watch that Trina gifted you, that's you saying you rich off of that? Like, really, bruh? Okay, anyway. uh, So, right before commercial, he tried to rush Bobby on the stage. But his pants were so goddamn tight, he didn't move very far. So, security was able to rush in and handle that ass. Okay, and I think Bobby would have handled him on site all the time. But y'all notice, Bobby didn't even motherfucking flinch. He didn't flinch one I. Ota. He ain't even standing up off the couch. He sat there like, this motherfucker ain't about to do nothing. He ain't do nothing. He ain't do nothing. Bobby was like, and what? You know what I'm saying? So, after they got done, you know, Nina was like, okay, so what is the real issue that you have with each other? Bobby was like, I ain't got a problem with him. And then Al said, oh, he don't? He ain't got a problem with me? Well, I guess I ain't got a problem with him either. Like, what the fuck? What the? Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit, y'all. So all that angry aggression that you just try to have running across the stage, <laughs> you did that for no fucking reason. You just, you ain't got no issue with him. Y'all don't make no damn sense. Make it make sense, y'all. Somebody make it make sense. Anyway, we moving on to Shay. Who I happen to like. I'm going to say it again. I like Shay Johnson. All y'all other reviewers that don't, y'all can suck it. I like Shay. <laughs> oh, anyway, we really moved on to like pretty Ricky story. And Pleasure's beef that he had with Shay about her beef with Blue that turned into um, his beef with Blue. So Nina asked what initially broke up the group. So Pleasure started off with saying, you know, it's money problems. People weren't paying us for songs that we were doing. And then Speck saying, like, you know, it's because we were young. Blue said, hold up, hold up. That is not what broke the group up. What broke the group up is that Pleasure wanted to go off on his little solo tip. Let's be honest about that. So... I see pleasure colored in his beard a little bit more. And I don't know. He got that. I don't know what the fuck. That's, 
He looked like the king, the jack in a deck of cards. That's what his face looked like now. Mm-hmm. He sure do. So, anyway, Shay still feel like pleasure should have defended her. I totally agree. I, I've been saying that. He should have squashed that shit right when it happened. He should have said to both of them right then in the motherfucking moment, this is my girl, don't disrespect her. This is my brother, don't disrespect him. Y'all motherfuckers respect me by not respect disrespecting each other. He should have squashed that shit right then. But no, instead he let that fire fester and he let it all blow up and security had to be called to the set instead of him just opening his motherfucking mouth up. I just want to speak to them separately in private. And, you know, and then they going to come together. And now they cool now. You know, I did that shit. No, that ain't what really happened. What really happened was Blue decided on his own that he wanted to talk to Shay. And he wanted to apologize to her. Ricky, pretty Ricky Marcus didn't say nothing to Blue about that. That is not what he said to him. Blue came out and said it himself. And then you took it to Shay and said, well, he wanted to talk to you and apologize to you. And then Shay and Blue talked. And she said, you know what, I'm going to accept your apology and I apologize to you as well. That was on them. That's all that, that was on them. Well, anyway, because at, at, at no time did Pleasure tell Blue that he was being disrespectful to his girlfriend. At no time. He went in on Shay. He did. But he mainly went in on Shay for a whole nother reason. Okay. So anyway, um, while Blue was trying to explain to Shay why pleasure could not defend either one of them in that moment liz jumps in and gives her opinion on it um and she's like no nah, he really should have defended her right and blue like the fuck are you who are you what the fuck are you jumping in here i don't get no fucks and shay like that's my girl that's my friend he's like i don't get no fucks about your opinion i didn't ask you for your opinion so shut the fuck up okay now we back to day one blue the one we met initially and i'm like bruh you out of pocket again you out of pocket so Nina, like, look, don't be disrespectful to her. And Liz, like, let's right. Don't let's not be disrespectful. But Blue still yelling, like, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, yada yada yada. So Prince and his future shoot jump up, like, hey, don't be talking to her like that. So Blue jump up. I swear, every time this motherfucker jump up, I don't realize that he's standing. That's how short he got that motherfucker Napoleon complex. Every time that nigga jump up, I don't realize that he's standing up. But he jumps the fuck up. Security step to him, and then that ugly ass one. What's his name? Um, the ugly motherfucker. The one slick him. Slick him with his high ass. You could tell that motherfucker's high all the time. His high ass try to jump bad at press, right? He so motherfucking had high. He didn't realize that he was moving in slow motion. <laughs> and security shut him down real motherfucking quick. Did y'all know that blue and speck are real blood brothers? Yeah, speck is blue's little brother. Blue real name is Diamond, which I always tripped me off that he had, his name was Diamond. But yeah, they real blood brothers and slick them, ugly ass. That's their real cousin. Pretty Ricky Marcus P, Pleasure P, was just a friend of the family. Anyway, I realize that Speck always has pleasures back in disagreements too. I wonder what that's about. Maybe they was fucking because I always thought that Speck was gay anyway. And, um, anyway, somebody told Blue that um, Prince was Liz's dude and so he like oh okay now i see why dude's jumping up because blue didn't know what the fuck prince was jumping up for either so now he like okay cool i understand he defended his girl you understand that but you couldn't understand that pleasure should have been defending his motherfucking girl against you that's all i'm saying anyway earlier i had said that nina is boring as fuck but she got in that ass with blue she got in that ass with blue she was saying you know all the cast members have the right to speak on any storyline regardless if it's their own or not and blue starts yelling at nina about how she's not gonna check her him about some motherfucking girl you know he could talk to her the way he want to talk to her and nina bossed up on him she was like look i said what the fuck i said damn it she could say what the fuck she want to say up on this guy on stage in the damn discussion and and i'm like okay Okay, she's like, this is what we're here for. That's what the reunion is about. So Blue like, okay, okay, you right, you right, you right. And he backed down and apologized. Well, Nina accepted it. Liz thanked her. Moving on. Moving on to the mint chocolate chick. Gabby. She down in Jamaica. And she's still trying to smash um, pleasure. Uh, she thirsty as fuck to me. That's thirsty. Um, Blue called her on her shit. And, and Shay, um, Shay was dead ass wrong for hitting Gabby. Although I thought she was aiming at Pleasure. Because Pleasure did duck. The spec pointed it out. That Pleasure didn't get hit with it. Because he moved. He ducked. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
little experiment. She jump in the conversation. Shay like and, and tell Shay, you know, you like a bully. You a bitch. You got this. You got that. And Shay tells Nina, hey, the experiment t- twins need five, you know, five minutes. Go on, give them they five minutes of shine. I'm gonna, gonna let them have it. So little experiment twin jumped up. And it looked like she done put Kiara's ass on her back. Like, did she plump her ass up some more with some more fillers? She looked like she walking around with Kiara's ass on now. I was like, what the fuck is going on? These botch body bitches need to stop. Y'all need to quit that shit. That's like, oh my God. So, Shay and Lil Experiment, they going back and forth, calling each other's names and stuff. Shay called her a piglet. And I swear for goodness, that chick face do look like a motherfucking shiny ass piggy bank. I swear I wanted to stuff some goddamn coins in her mouth and bust that bitch head open just to get my motherfucking change back. She looked horrible. Oh my gosh, she fucked up in the face. She fucked up in the body. And then her goddamn mama big experiment. She want to chime in on how shade weave don't match, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, yeah. And one of the best lines of the motherfucking episode, Shay said, bitch, we still trying to figure out what the fuck you look like. I love Shay. I'm telling you. <laughs> that was one of the best lines of the whole episode. Oh. Oh, okay. So after the break, we move on to Malik and Jeffrey's old whack asses. And um, they did the playback of the, all the whole little scene from him being in love with Jeffrey to Jeffrey cheating on him, not a lot of this, all the way to the end. And Bobby's face throughout that whole playback is priceless. He sat there like, mouth dropped to the floor. Like, I can't believe this shit happened. And let's just say, um, I'm going to repeat this again. Jeffrey is the wackest, wackest dressing dude ever. He, oh my God. But anyway, Bobby say, if he knew that they had already been cheating, that the relationship had already started at that moment, he probably would have cried instead of being angry and fighting. I don't believe that shit, Bobby. I think you still would have popped off. Um, I don't believe that one hour. Anyway, Jeffrey saying that this is his first fight in his life. He ain't never had a fight before. And then they get hit by somebody that he was in a relationship with. Nina tried to turn train it into a domestic violence situation. Understandably so. And I could tell that this is his first fight because Bobby beat that ass. And I still say deservingly so, even though violence is not the answer. Well, Malik hits Jeffrey with the ooh, ooh, ooh. He said, yeah, um, I love him. You know, he brought a lot out of me, good, bad, and ugly. And I just know that we shouldn't be together. <laughs> well, this is not for me. And um, Nina's like, ooh, can we speak on that? He said, no, I don't want to speak on it. And I think Jefferson say shit about it either. Jeffrey's like, this is the first I ever heard of it. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm looking for Jeffrey's face right now because that motherfucker hit the floor. It's cracked down on the motherfucker floor. It's the fuck you get. That's what the fuck you get. Anyway, Jeffrey, <laughs> he learned at that moment that he was being dumped. He said he knew they was on the road to that, but they flew to New York together. Now he had to check his ass into a separate hotel because he just got dumped on TV. <laughs> That's what the fuck you get. That's what the fuck you get. And, and Bobby's face was still like, <laughs> throughout the whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay. So they had a live performance with Trick or Treat. And this dude named Mike Smith. And I'm thinking, why didn't I why did they not do a, a song with gunplay? I would have preferred to hear gunplay because I want to hear his flow. He seemed he had a, like he had a nice little flow when I heard him a little bit. I wanted to hear some flow. I wish they would have did that because Mike Smith not even on the fucking show. So why the fuck would we get Mike Smith? Anyway, JoJo, you could tell her her face was she was not so impressed. If y'all had watched, like say, any clips on VH1 and they did like um uh, look, a Q and A to the stars. Yeah, JoJo is not impressed by Trina ass at all. Not at all. <laughs> I love me some JoJo. Anyway, the best thing about this song uh, was the hook to me. Uh, the performance itself was lazy to me, um, but they did sound like they did back in the day. I couldn't tell if they was doing it to to a backing track or not. Um, but the girl who was singing the hook. Bitch voice was beautiful, and she wasn't on stage, so they did at least have the instrumental with the hook playing. And but yeah, the, the sound, the song is cool. It's it's that old '90s vibe, though. You know, one of when you lay back in the summertime in the park and listen to. It's not something that I'm gonna be bumping up in the club, nothing like that. I probably won't even be bumping it on my way to work. Um, 
it do sound like a carrier bass line though and i like bass so maybe i don't know so it wasn't a bad song it was okay it was okay well next they bring out the uh our latin flavors so we got veronica uh bitch ass vega on stage we got juju why the fuck is juju on stage she's not part of this cast they brought juju out a model la negra on that side right then you got holly ass sitting on this side I think Joy was sitting over there and Bobby. I think that's who was on stage. That was weird for me. Mm -hmm. Cause I know like say a oh, fake ass Steph was supposed to come out too. I couldn't remember if she was on stage. But anyway, I told y'all that motherfucking Holly ass had not ever heard that girl's music at all. I bet any money it wasn't until that damn radio spot that he had heard that song and was like, oh shit, maybe I could make some money off her. And then he really wanted to fuck with her after that. And um, he said that like Amara was feeling him. I believe that shit too. I do believe that she was feeling him. Um, he said the only thing he was tripping off of was she brought her mama to a business meeting. And she's like, I take my mom everywhere. She the one to help me make all my business decisions. She rode with me. And she asked Trina about being a veteran in the business and would you bring your mama? In? And she was like, no, I wouldn't bring my mama. A lot of people bring their goddamn mamas to their business meeting because their mamas are their momagers and shit like that. And they advise her. So don't act like this is something that's out of the ordinary. Um, but the, you can't tell me this was no fucking business meeting. He said they was up there dabbing and dancing on the dance floor. That's not a business meeting. Y'all went on a fucking date. That's exactly what happened. That's what he was mad about. That she brought her mom on a motherfucking date and he couldn't get no ass that night. So, um, I think right, I don't, I can't remember exactly. I don't know if this was the previews for next week or whatever, but I think right before they got into a little argument about uh, how she came to his house and she bought him some bed sheets and some pillows and shit like that. And how the whole situation she was explaining was going to get out of pocket, but she admitted to laying down on his bed. Maybe that's in the previews for next week. I don't know. So that was the end of the reunion. That's all that shit right there. Um, the reunion seemed to be a lot better than the damn show. <laughs> the show just it's probably still going to make me angry because of uh, punk ass Veronica and old fake ass Stephanie ain't really talked yet. And I know in the previews, I saw Juju going in on Holly ass. I'm telling you, if they remove Holly Ass and Veronica Vega from this show, they really can get rid of Trina Ass too for me. Then um, I might still watch. They got to do a, a, a shake up, but I'm I'm like, where's Simply Jess? She's supposed to have been part of the cast. If you go to VH1, she was part of the cast, but I didn't see her out here at all. Um, Prince could go for me too. He was irrelevant. I like Shay. <laughs> I like Shay. I like Bobby. I can't stay in trip, but she could tip, but she could stay. Um Gunplay and Kiara, uh, they could stay. Yeah. Even Trick could stay. Trick and Joy situation. I really want to see how that unfold. But they could do it without training for me. Yeah. So if they do a complete major shake up, then maybe I'll change my mind and uh, review again next year. But Veronica Vega and Holly Ass gotta go. They have to go for me to watch again. I'm telling y'all that. But I'll be back here next week for the reunion part two. I will be. I will be. All right, y'all. Thank you for watching the video. Like. Give it a thumbs up so that way I can know that you liked it too. If you have any questions or comments that you want to leave, leave them down in the comment section. Whether you disagree with me or not, you can leave it down in the comment section too as long as you're respectful to me as the host. And we all right. And uh, share this video if you have other social media outlets that can be shared so other people can see it, you know, all that there. And subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so before for other great TV show recaps and reviews. Thank you all for coming out. Peace.